This is the Door History Podcast and my name is Naomi Clifford. Here at the door we like to push the door, open the door, unlock the door but our aim is to cast some light on hitherto unknown stories of women. Just try and balance things up a little bit. They might not be famous women but I think you'll be interested in hearing about them. The door. Door. The, door. The, door. the door, the door, the door, the door, the door. Well, today I thought we'd look at um, teenage girls, uh, particularly the story of two teenage girls who told whopping great lies. Really? Teenage girls telling lies? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they. I think probably all teenagers tell lies. Yes. Um, but when girls tell lies they seem to come in for a a greater degree of um, criticism and condemnation Mm. and I think that's certainly the case with these two and uh, while I was looking at their stories I began to ask myself some questions about why they felt they should lie. Mm. Um, When was this? These uh, the first one was the middle of the 18th century, a very notorious case, mm. Elizabeth Canning. And the second one was in 1817, so almost uh, over 60 years later. Yeah. Um, and that was Princess Caribou, who oh. you may have heard of. Yes, I think I have. Who made a film about her. Yes. Not a terribly good film, but an interesting film nevertheless. Okay. And um, yes... I I, uh, I looked at this whole theme when I wrote my book yeah. about the disappearance of Maria Glenn, which we can talk about in another episode. But yeah. um, this whole thing of teenage girls and the lies they tell and what happens to them after they're found out yes. is very interesting to me. Yes, because these are big whopping lies, yes. I guess, not yes. the little ones. They really landed in trouble yes, they because did. of them. Yeah, so what's the story of Canning? Well, Canning was a servant. Um, She lived in the city of London. And one New Year's Day in 18... Well, it was in 1853. Yes. uh, She was coming home from her... uh, She'd been visiting her uncle and aunt. She was going back to where she lived. She worked in a place called Aldermanbury, which Mm. you can still find in the city of London. It doesn't look at all like it did in the 18th century. Uh, Alderman Burry Postern is actually what his full name. Okay. Sounds very medieval. It does. She was a scullery maid to someone called Edward Lyon, and he was a prosperous carpenter. Right. Now, when she was coming home, she had to pass a sort of wasteland, and at that point, she disappeared, and nobody saw her for a month. Oh, a long time. So she arrived back, I believe she went back to her parents um, who found her in a what was described as a deplorable condition. Right. Uh, she had a bloody rag around her head, She her face and hands were dirty, she'd been wounded on her ear and she said she said that she had been kidnapped Yes. Um, and she'd been held against her will in a house and lived on starvation rations. Mm. So bread and water effectively and that one day she saw her opportunity to to leave and more or less just climbed out of a window found her way back to London and arrived yes she also said that she had been pressurized to becoming a prostitute yeah and that she'd had her stays her undergarments cut off and stolen yes now Kidnapping wasn't a felony crime, so you couldn't be hanged for kidnapping. No. But you could be hanged for stealing an item of value. Yes. Such as stays. So she was reporting that she had been a victim of this. Yeah. Um, Whether or not she thought she could just sort of seamlessly fold back into her old life, I don't know. But Mm. very soon a mob gathered, uh, determined to get revenge for her treatment. Yes. And based on who oh knows dear. what, yes. they rode out, they arrived at a place um, in Enfield, Enfield Wash 
in Hertfordshire. They decided that two elderly women who lived in this house, that they had been responsible and arrested them, took them back to London and put them in jail. Right. Um, and of course they were going to be tried for their lives because of the stolen, the, the stolen stays. Yes. How did... How, okay. But how, how do we know? Maybe she told the truth. How do we know she didn't tell the truth? Well, it became very controversial. Yes. And, it, you know, it, it, the stories were, shall we say, ever moving. Okay. So she told one story and then she told another version of it and another version of it. But also, the accused, where was the evidence against them? Mm. So they came up in, uh, for trial at the Old Bailey. Yes. Um, and there were three witnesses for their defence. And they had come up from a place called Abbotsbury in, in Dorset. And they said that one of them, they had seen one of them at the time of the alleged crime in Dorset. So oh, how yes. could she be yes. in Hertfordshire committing these crimes? Yes. Um, but uh, there were some questions about their evidence. And it... Uh, led to, to, well, one of the accused also gave varying stories. So that led to a question mark over these three men from Dorset oh. and whether they were telling the truth. Uh -huh. And they were charged with perjury and slammed in jail. Oh my goodness. So you've got. There's a bit of a knock on <laughs> effect here. So yeah. you've got the two men in, uh, the two women in jail and the three men in jail. Yes. Um, and now in. Riding to the rescue for yeah. the case comes Henry Fielding, the novelist, mm -hmm. who wrote Tom Jones. Mm. Uh, and he um, supported Elizabeth Canning in her story. On the other side, you've got the magistrate, Sir Crisp Gascoigne, yes. who you may not remember, but he's a direct uh, ancestor of Bamber Gascoigne oh, I see. of University Challenge. Oh, I fame. see. Okay. Retired now, there I you think. go. Uh, so, Crisp Gascoigne didn't believe a word of Elizabeth's story. So, uh, he started really investigating and he, start, he, he really set up an independent inquiry and sought out new witnesses. Um, and London became split now between those who supported Canning and those who didn't believe him. And a whole load of pamphlets flew all over the place. Everyone was writing pamphlets. It seemed to be extremely important. Yes. This teenage girl's story. Yes. Um, but it did become clear that she was lying. Yes. Um, so Sir Crisp Gascoigne persuaded the king to pardon one of the women... But the other woman had already been punished and she had been branded on her thumb. Oh. Uh, so, um, you know, she could have been hanged, I suppose, but so yeah. she got away with it. it. Fairly lightly. Yeah. Now, Canning was charged with willful, per uh, willful and corrupt perjury. Yes. Um, and she was put in jail. Yes. And then she was shipped off to America. Where she died twenty years later, having had five children, yeah, and married the great nephew of um, the governor of Connecticut. So she did quite well in the oh, end. that's good for a maid, sir, or for a, for a scullery maid. She yes. did quite well, but it was really this massive argument about whether she was telling the truth or not. Yes, um, that interested and me. And she clearly didn't. She didn't. But it makes you wonder what 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 on earth happened in that month. Well, exactly, and I, I've got a feeling that what uh, what may have happened is one of several possibilities. Number one, the most obvious, she was pregnant, gave birth, yeah, gave the child away, or the child died, and she came back, yeah. Or she may have gone off and had an abortion. Mm become ill and that's why she came back in such a bad state yes yes um, that's also likely yes or she may well have been kidnapped and pushed into prostitution 
I mean, that also could account for her poor state and her wounded ear if someone mm. had um, bullied her or and abused her. Yes. And she'd managed to get away. But she may not have been able, feel able, to tell the truth about any of those options. No, or why she ended up being in a particular position, I guess, yes. if she was kidnapped. It might yes. have been because she whatever was curious to find meet someone or you don't yes. know that sort of thing you yes. get yourself into perhaps, trouble perhaps yes it, perhaps but she was starting a relationship with someone who was actually grooming her for prostitution or something yeah. like that yes. you can imagine and yes. then suddenly you land in trouble even <laughs> sad. and and then all these men sort of surround her and say okay well then find find the people who did this to you and then you've got no control no. over what they do and you just go along with with, with oh dear, yes, exactly. It's dangerous, isn't it, to yeah. tell lies? <laughs> I do feel really quite sorry for her. I do. Um, yeah. I think she was swept up in something she, that bigger. was bigger than she, could, she mm. could manage. Yes, I think you're right. And I think... I think it is a very typical... How old was she? 17? Was she I old? think she was 17. Yeah, yeah. 17. Yeah. yeah, it's a... It's um. I think... Most of us, even today, um, either with our own kids, if we've got daughters, or thinking about myself as a teenager, mm. you know, you can sort of, well, obviously not exactly the same, but that sort of idea that something happens and you can't quite tell the truth because that will land you into trouble. <laughs> and then something <coughs> happens that just gets you into bigger trouble. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. <coughs> We're having a little cough. We have a cough break, <coughs> not Sorry, a coffee Mama. break. <laughs> a coffee as well. Yeah. Well, that is interesting. It's a sort of um, uh, interesting, this idea mm. of what makes you tell lies rather than outrage they told a lie, I think. <coughs> uh, yes. yes. Um, and how about this princess? Well, well Princess Caribou, she, she's another one I have great, well, you know, a, a degree of sympathy for. She, uh, she turned up in a village, Armondsbury, in Gloucestershire, which is about eight miles north of Bristol. She, she uh, was clearly somebody who needed trouble and the local, who, who was in trouble and needed help. And the local magistrate took and his wife took her in and looked after her and she was from overseas she claimed to be a lost princess from a place called Javasu mm. and she had dark colouring so she looked what you know you might yeah. use that word exotic about her um she she didn't speak english as a native um, she wore a black gown and a turban. Oh, she didn't speak English. <laughs> well, she must have spoken some so, sort of she rudimentary English. <laughs> and at somewhere somewhere along the line, she became friends with a Portuguese traveller who claimed to be able to interpret for her. Um, and through him, she related this convoluted story of being abducted, yes. going on a... Um, dangerous sea journey and she made a daring escape she jumped overboard into the Bristol Channel and she swam to the shore and there she is in Armandsbury in Gloucestershire she was absolutely delightful yeah. she fenced and she shot bows and arrows and she swam naked in the lake which everybody was completely entranced by I'm sure <laughs> um, and she yes. appeared to pray to her god which was uh, she called Ala Tala. Ala Tala. <laughs> um, she was in the newspapers. She was very creative. She was. was she was. She was. Um, and she was asked to inscribe some of her language. So she she wrote some hieroglyphs, I suppose. And these were sent off to Oxford to the yeah. clever Oxford scholars, who wrote back to say that they were quote humbug. Oh. So it's all. This is where it all begins to fall apart. Um, and as I said, she was in the newspapers, and there were descriptions of her. Yeah. But uh, somebody recognised this description as of 
a woman who'd been, or a teenager in fact, who had been staying in her lodging house in Bristol. And she was really, she was revealed to be uh, Mary Wilcox, and she was the daughter of a poor cobbler from yes. a village in Devon. You can make a joke about that, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I yes. think she sounds formidable. She I like sounds, her. She sounds wonderful, doesn't yes. she? Yes, yes. Um, joie de vivre and... Uh, yes. You're just... You're great. You know, carry it off like that. And, and also sort of talking a, a fake language. That's yes. so brilliant. <laughs> and for someone who came from you know, not an educated background, yes. obviously, you know, quite poverty-stricken background, a yeah. poor cobbler from, from uh, Devon... Yes. Uh, so clever. So clever. She must Take have been up fencing. So intelligent. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yes. But, uh, quite outrageous. Brilliant. Yes. 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 But of course, the people that she deceived did not see it that way. No. Because they were made to look very stupid. Foolish. And there's, you know, there's the magic. Taken in. Yes. Taken in by this. Yes. yes. Naked swimming and fencing. And <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So she was quietly hustled off to America so not not with the fanfare or not the fan that's the wrong word but not with the noise that Elizabeth Canning made no that was it wasn't wasn't quite so dramatic I think uh she went off in the care of three religious ladies um oh. she was persuaded to emigrate to America so her, she wasn't tried no for this deception um and uh she did return after a while and she lived, I think she was a flower seller somewhere okay. um, in Gloucestershire uh, or maybe perhaps Bristol actually. Okay, so fairly so, simple, so, yes. simple life. Yes. Well, um, hard I'm sure, but I'm not, sure, not so yes. elaborate. I think, I think Princess Caribou was her best moment actually. I agree. And and she, if, if she'd lived now, I think she, we would be seeing her on the television. I maybe. agree. She'd be, a, she'd be a celebrity. She would. Yeah. Yes, it really is. Yes. That's that sort of uh, celebrity culture we have now where people become big from doing very little. Yes. Because they go on a <laughs> reality <Yes>. show <laughs> But, yeah, well done her in a way. Yes. But it's also sad, of course, she had to be pushed down there. Yes. All that uh, yes. creativity and, uh, as you say, intelligence mm. and uh, other things must have, you know, gone to waste, mm. really. She mm -hmm. had to make it up and extraordinary girl. Absolutely. Um, but what, what's also interesting is the way these two girls were viewed at the time is so different to how perhaps you and I would look at them. Yes. They were denounced as liars. And if you'd had the term liar thrown at you, yes, that was defining. Mm. You were a liar or you were not a liar. Yes. And everybody had a sort of religious duty yes. to adhere to the truth. Yes. Um, of course, the truth is something we all argue about. But yes. The truth in terms of she wasn't being telling the truth, Princess Caribbean, when she claimed to be Princess Caribbean. Yes. And Elizabeth Canning was not telling the truth when she said she'd been kidnapped and yes. held in this house in Hertfordshire. But uh, so they they were defined as liars and they were written about as liars for yeah. decades and centuries afterwards. Yes, but yes, exactly. We are talking yes. about them. We are talking about them. But, but particularly Elizabeth Canning was held up as an example of a female liar. And there's yeah. something about girls telling lies. You yeah. know, girls are the inheritors of Eve. Yes. Um, the original Ultimate. liar. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, and they can't be deceiving. trusted. Deceiving. De 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 yeah. And they... Yeah. they uh, particularly when sex is involved, yeah, um, which was perhaps what happened with Elizabeth Canning, yeah, lies told around sex, yes. Um, there didn't seem to be that feeling about Princess Caribou, no. Um, but maybe her popularity was it was a young woman who had a certain appeal. Mm. And that gave her a little bit of power. Yes, and it gave her access to a lovely lifestyle that yeah. she wouldn't normally um, be entitled yeah. to. 
yes, cavorting around on the estates, you know, shooting bows and arrows. Yeah. Which, that was very nice, thank you very much. Yes, yes, of course. Not something that a, a, a servant, someone of the servant so, class... Uh, so yeah. do you feel that t- lying in the 18th century what, it was more of was more shameful in a way or more of an you know was worse than you you know when we say oh they lie you know she's a lying girl obviously we don't yes we think that's a good thing no. but was it more of a sort of a I stronger th- i think it was more of a thing yeah. and i think when girls lied and deceived men mm. they came in for much more um condemnation yes uh, when they were discovered, I think because they had made to look, m- made men look stupid, stupid and gullible, and being in that power position, that uh, that men undeniably then were seen as mm. superior. Mm. Oh, of absolutely! Course, uh, yeah, that would be a real mm. threat. Yes, to have someone tricking you. Yes, uh, absolutely. And and if you think about the way that parents talked to their children about how they should be yes and if you think about all of the books for parents about bringing up girls particularly mm. all those conduct books telling them what subjects they should study at yeah. school or um uh how they should sit even yeah. or all of that kind of thing and then you think about what um parents were talking to their boys about and how mm. they should behave Yes. Very, very differently. Um, and you have people like Lord Chesterfield talking to his son mm. about women. This is very famous advice he gave to his son. And he said, women then are only children of a larger growth. So they're like yeah. big children. Yes. Uh, they have an entertaining tattle and sometimes wit. Yes. But for solid reasoning, good sense, I never knew in my life one that had it so yeah. they're seen as flighty um unserious yeah silly little things and with the uh, right then can be patronized and tricked into do maybe you can you know as you well you shouldn't trick little children but i guess you can sort of make them you know yes do things yes. by by gently sort of <laughs> tricky like yes. tricking them <laughs> but I suppose so that was okay for men to do that to women, treat them. Oh, yes, as children. Yeah. And um, they were, we girls were sort of caught between two things. So they, they were on the one hand told they have to be utterly respectable and um, upright in their behaviour. They're to be compliant with people mm. to telling them what to do. So they're supposed to be well behaved. Yeah. But on the other hand when they they're not supposed to know enough about the world to take part in the bad things of the world yeah but they have to recognize what is a threat so yes. how can you recognize what is a threat if you don't know what it is what? No. so they really they they could they could never win they could yeah and that was particularly i guess to do with sex and pregnancy and that sort of thing yes uh, control over them yeah. and their their bodies, of yeah. course, because the other thing girls were supposed to uh, be uh, subject to is, you know, more than boys was their desire to to be pregnant. Well, of course, more than boys than that, but um, yeah. their hormones were stronger. Yeah. So they they had to fight their own desire to be pregnant. Yeah. So they were seen as the randy ones, really. Yes. And boys were the <laughs> Almost the victims, victims of the <laughs> female. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so they had to sort of fight the natural impulses of their bodies. Yes. Be good, but also not know about all the sinfulness in the world. Yes. Because that's not part of their. It's life. a no-win situation, so, yes. and I think I think we, we we I think women we still have a lot of uh, of that, don't we? We have to be sexy, but not too sexy. We have mm. to be. <laughs> There's a lot of things we have to be both yes, yes, at the same time. Absolutely. Clever yes. but not too mousy, yes. you know. <laughs> or, you know, it's a difficult line to walk. It is, and it's one that designed not to win. Really. Yes, yes. So. It's quite um, interesting to hear these stories from 
so far back. And I mean, I guess they weren't recognised as teenagers because that's quite a new phenomenon. Yes, but I, I do think that's a new concept. That you yeah. know, the, but young women, yes. young girls were seen as different to older women. Yes. Uh, un- unmarried women, so a young unmarried women were, yeah. were seen. But they weren't children. No, no, definitely not. So and I'm they, sure yes. they weren't perceived as children by no. many men, no. I'm sure. No, and I think that's, you know, with these two stories, Elizabeth Canning and yeah. Princess Caribou, the fact that they're uh, young women yes. uh, held a fascination for the older men. Yes. And when it all turned to dust, their fury was um, was was uh, increased, really, yeah. because they were young women. That That is uh, interesting as well, how you get this sort of judge in Canning's uh, case who goes, she is lying. Yes. She's a lying little teenager, <laughs> that one. And, and Fielding mm. uh, going... Oh, no, 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 quite paternal in yes. a way. Poor little thing, I shall yes. be man hero yes. and uh, sort this mess out mm. for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I suppose both of them are wielding, uh, I think, canning, maybe not intentionally, but in the end, at, before she was found out, uh, quite a lot of power. Yes, she. I mean, it was the most attention she'd had in her life, no doubt. Yeah. Um, uh and I think she probably didn't know what to do with that power. No. And she didn't know how to handle her own lies. No. Or, or the stories that she, she would come out with. So, um, yes, I mean, yeah. an interesting psychological study, really, is what you do when you're in that situation. It's all going a bit out of control. Yeah. But you still have power to, to, uh, to change the, the course of events. Yeah. So, in the end, I think she was just overcome uh, by the her the the uh, revelation that she hadn't been telling the truth, mm. and then that, then she was in their power completely. Yes, it's it's fascinating. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's it's been really interesting talking about these girls and lies mm. and and uh, it give you food for thought really about where we are now. I think. Mm-hmm. Looking at those two yes. examples, yes, because oh. I fear we haven't got that far. <laughs> you come to the end of our podcast. My name is Lena Augustenson, and I'm the producer. And I am Naomi Clifford, history writer. All details of, my, of this episode are on our website, thedoorpodcast.com. You can also follow us on social media, on Facebook. On Twitter, we are at The Door Podcast. You can subscribe to us as well, and uh, on any of the platforms that we're on, just follow the links. On, you can also sign up for a newsletter on our website, which will tell you when the next episode drops. And yeah, I think that's it. That is it, yes. yes.